Hi, good morning. Welcome to day three of my tutorials from Franz Crafts. Again, we're still using the Swallowtail Butterfly. Um, you can believe we're halfway through the week already. So um, I'm going to share a scrapbook page with you today and then two more projects. Um, one on Thursday and one on Friday. And then that'll be my week of using this stamp. So as I said today, we're going to make a scrapbook page. Um, I'm not a scrapbooker by rule. Uh, but I thought I'd give it a go to show you how good the stamp can be for anything you really. So first up I've taken a 12 by 12 piece of craft card that you can get from Stamping Up and I'm just going to use uh, a dust buddy which you can also get from Stamping Up just to give a, a rub over the paper or card and that takes away any static or sticky marks that might be on there to stop because we're going to be using embossing powder today, so that will stop it sticking. Um, I'm going to use, obviously, the butterfly stamp, and I'm using a watermark stamp pad that you can get from the catalogue. So I'm just going to ink it up. You can't see this ink very well. It's a clear sticky ink, um, which enables the powder to stick to it. I just stamped that where I wanted to go. I've got no samples to show you this morning, so we're going from scratch, so I hope it turns out okay. So give this a good press. Like so. You can hear the sticky as it comes off the paper. And also, just from the gorgeous grunge, I'm taking some of these little spots just to a bit of a trail after the the butterfly like so one more down there okay and now I'm going to take my black embossing powder and just sprinkle it all over where I've stamped Give it a bit of a shuffle around, it will oops, stick to where you want it to stick, like so, and then you just need to empty it off onto a piece of paper. Let's get that bit off my mat, otherwise I'll be embossing my mat as well. That's it. So just get some scrap paper and then you just tip. off, give it a little bit of a, a tap, a bit of a wiggle, I'll just put that off, I'll put that in the pot afterwards, excuse me, there we go, and what you can do is if you've got, you've got any embossing powder where you don't want it to be, just get a brush and um, give it a bit of a, a brush off and now I just need to heat that with a heat gun. Emboss embossing um, powder is, is good stuff because you can literally see it changing as you are heating it so once it goes shiny you know that it's, it's done so it's amazing stuff. Heat this up, the stuff is going to go now, so I just move my heat gun around. Just don't hold it in two, one place for too long, otherwise, you'll start scorching the card. I'll just do it on there. These wings. If you've never done heat embossing before, I recommend you give it a go. It's uh, it's like magic once it starts to heat up you can just say so you can see the shine on it so um, just do these little bits here there we go that's it all done 
So we'll just leave that for a moment. So what I'm going to do next is take a strip of Whisper card and I've got my tag punch and I'm just going to pop that in and stamp to create a bit of a, a tag ending and I'll do it on the other side as well. Find that one in the catalogue and then I'm going to take a couple of the stamps from the Botanicals for You from the Celebration catalogue. As you probably noticed I love these stamps. <laughs> so I'm going to take Mint Macaroon and Watermelon Wonder. So I'm just going to randomly stamp some flowers down and then I will add the leaves. You can even go off the page a little bit if you want to because it will still pick up. Okay, that's that bit and I just need to do the leaves. So if you've not seen the celebration catalogue, it's worth having a look um, online or requesting one from a demo like myself. Um, because once you spend £45, you get to pick some lovely papers or stamp sets. Some of them are for a limited time only, so you can only get them for a short period of time. Just finish off these bits of leaves, that's it. And then I'm going to take some ribbon. I've got some cotton ribbon, which is um, called Rich Razzleberry. I'm going to take a length of that and then I'm just going to thread through the top like so and get a bit of double sided tape and secure it on the back just to hold it into place. In the centre, set, and then run that along the front of your panel and through the tag bit at the other end. Just pulling it tight, but not too tight so it doesn't buckle the card. And then just again fasten that down. That didn't go very well. The hazards of making a live video, you have to get something stuck. <laughs> okay, so pop that there for now and then I'm just going to add some double sided tape to it and then I'll pop it on my scrapbook page. Well, the weather today is extremely windy. Um, I'm recording these YouTube videos a week in advance, so it could be very sunny next week. So if you hear me talking about the weather, don't worry, it's from the week before. <laughs> right, so I've got my panel. I'm just going to take my tape off and I'm going to pop it down this right-hand side of the page like so okay all right so i've taken a picture of my daughter when she was younger she's probably only about three or four on here um she likes having her face painted so and this one's as a butterfly so i thought it was ideal an ideal sort of page to use so taken some of the paper from the wildflower fields designer series paper and I'm just going to mount that onto the onto my scrapbook page. I'm not going to stick the photo down at the moment. I was going to 
just uh, show you a different way of doing it and then if you did need to change the photo or need it to take it out you haven't then got it stuck on the page okay so I'm just going to put that at a bit of a an angle there so what I've done I've cut from uh, one of the retired dies which is perfect pennant I've cut a circle I've also cut some bunting as well to use so what I'm going to do is cut that circle in half and then in half again like that and then I'm going to just pop my picture on there and then what I'll do is I'll pop some glue along the back of this but not on the whole thing so it doesn't stick on the pictures Whoops. so I'm just going to do some there like so take that and stick it like that so it's holding the photo down but not actually sticking the photo down so we'll do the all four pieces so it's me putting glue onto the photo <laughs> okay just pop that back in place and we'll stick that one down there So you can see what I'm doing at the bottom. Okay. One there. Take my fourth one. And stick that there. As you can see, it's now fastened the photo down without actually sticking the photo. Right, so now I've got my picture in place, I'm just going to take a little length of ribbon It's got my ribbon, I'm just going to cut it an angle on the end so it doesn't fray right, And just pop underneath up here And just tie a knot now I've got extremely sticky fingers, so I'm sticking to everything. So I think my scissors need a bit of sharpening. There we go. Right. So next up, just pop that up to one side. I've die cut some bunting. So I'm just going to stamp some the alphabet on the, um, not the alphabet, my daughter's name on there. So I'm using the Epic alphabet which is from the main catalogue and I'm going to stamp it in Tip Top Tort just so it shows up. So I just need to take the first letter Her name's quite easy because it's Hannah, so um, I only need three letters in all <laughs> because it's it's uh, an easy name to do. Right, stamp that, that, ink that up. Take one of the uh, the bunting and just stamp. There's one H. Let's do the other one. Get the letter A. Let's just do it that way. Okay, we need whoops, one A. Didn't quite take. The good thing about these clear stamps is that you can always you see where you're stamping so you can go back and re-stamp over the top if you've missed a little bit like I just did. 
because you can see exactly where you're placing them. Right, so I just take my N and just do two. So there we go. So what I'm going to do now is just pop some dimensionals onto the back. It only needs a couple on each one. Um, the card I'm using is matching to the ink pad, so it's Watermelon Wonder. Let's put those on. So we're nearly done. So I'm sure a lot of you do a lot of scrapbooking. Um, and I say it's not something I do very often, but always happy to give everything a go. Okay, that's that. So I'll bring back in the scrapbook page. What I wanted to do was just have a piece of ribbon going along the top as if the bunting was attached to it. So what I'm going to do is tie a knot in that end as a starting point. Just pop my just pop a little dob of glue there and it just keeps it in one place there I won't stick the other end down just yet till I've done the bunting it's just not my heat gun on the floor I think I'm having a bit of a clumsy day today okay so now all I need to do is take my bunting and pop it on there the, the letters will hold the ribbon down so you don't need to be sticking the ribbon down. Unless of course you want to and then you just need some uh, thin tape to do that. If you put them at a bit of an angle as you're doing, it creates a bit like it's proper bunting. And uh, a one more H, right on the end there. And then all I was going to do is just tie. I can do that now, actually. A little knot on the end. like so and maybe just finish off with a few little flowers dotted about and the leaves And here we have the finished scrapbook page, so let's give you a bit of a shot, there we are. So I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today and I um, hope you can join me tomorrow where well, I'll be using the butterfly stamp again um, for something a little bit different again. Thanks, bye.